I recently had a chance to sit down with Michael Perone from IBM's TJ Watson Research Center in Yorktown Heights, New York. Here are some highlights from our wide-ranging conversation on AI. Uh, my role at IBM is the AI Partnership Program uh, Director, and my responsibility is to try to build partnerships between the uh, research group and uh, clients, partners that have needs. Uh, in particular, we're focused on uh, how we can advance AI planning into risk management. And so we've developed a tool called the Scenario Planning Advisor that allows us to advise risk management planning and help people plan for the future. Okay, Scenario Planning Advisor. Sounds great. When I started in AI, we really looked at um, understanding, reasoning, learning, and planning. That was a big part of it. And lately, I see we've been looking at the first three, but not so much of planning as a core part of AI. Tell me what you're doing with planning with the was it SPAs? Yes, the yeah. Scenario Planning Advisor, the SPA. Okay. One way to think about the way AI planning is being used today is that it's very pervasive, right? Whenever I get in my car and I want to get directions, I'll get a map and I'll, you know, in a fraction of a second, have directions from point A to point B. And, uh, you know, that technology is so advanced that it's essentially free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we're taking that technology and extending it to the next level, right? You've got in, in the dra travel problem, the question of how do you go from point A to point B, what we're doing is saying, well, what if you don't know where you're going, right? It's a very funny problem, mm -hmm. but it's a real problem in many, many uh, businesses, many industries, any large organization that deals with risk uh, and has to understand what are the challenges down the road. They don't know. And so it's like that map problem, except you don't know where you're going. You just have all these opportunities, all these possibilities that are coming. So we take AI plan uh, technology and we extend it to what's called AI plan recognition, where you try to understand what plan is evolving in real time, right? Tell me a little bit about maybe an example of how you would use this. Well, imagine uh, you have drivers in the real world, right? So um, you have inflation. So as inflation goes up, the Federal Reserve might raise interest rates. They might not. But that's an, a choice that they have, and that would be a driver that causes something else to happen in the real world. So maybe businesses adjust and they lower their spending because of higher interest rates. And then that, because of that, they, maybe they hire fewer people. So something like increased inflation might lead to something far down the road. We would like to be able to model these kinds of things, and this is actually what we're doing now, so that uh, an organization can plan and see how the... Uh, events today can roll out and cause uh, impact on their businesses in the future. Now, we uh, are already using this uh, within IBM. We have a, a chief risk officer, and his responsibility is to manage the risks that face the corporation as a whole. Um, there are very well-established risks that many you know, organizations deal with, but there are also emerging risks, risks that haven't fully presented, and because of that, people really don't know how to manage them. The trick is to make people aware of those risks and help them focus on them before they impact your business. And really, this is what we're trying to do with the SPA tool. When you use the term driver for something like um, inflation, do you have a predefined set of drivers that you're looking at? Or are you adding new ones? How does that work? That's a very interesting question. This is really where the science comes in. So we do create models by hand. And we're also creating models automatically using natural language processing and a lot of the machine learning technologies that are being developed today. Um, I think today's technology is very much dependent on human knowledge and subject matter experts to capture those thoughts and those drivers and those relationships that drive the real world. We very consciously started uh, this, this uh, approach without using those advanced techno technologies like machine learning because mm -hmm. One of the interesting constraints of machine learning, although machine learning is tremendously powerful and we've seen the effects all over the world, uh, you need data to train it. If you don't have data, you can't train it. So we very consciously avoided using data initially because we were hoping to capture black swan events, right? Black swan events are things that have never happened before. So if they've never happened, there's no data. So you can't train a neural net to learn those kind of things. So we took a different approach where we build these models that are more like logical reasoning models. And by 
and capturing that knowledge, especially by capturing it from multiple sources, right? You may know about one topic, I may know about another, other people may know about other things. So if I ask you, hey, what's going to happen tomorrow? You'll have a point of view, and I might have a different point of view, and, and 10 other people might have 11 other points of view, right? By combining all of those things, we can capture reasoning about these futures in ways that each individual won't. And so we can come up with hypotheses that are novel and uh, haven't been thought of before. You talked about this stream of information. Um, are we talking in most or many cases or any cases? Are you talking real-time data? Are you talking streaming data? What are you analyzing? Uh, we use a variety of data sources. Um, we're not constrained in any particular way, but currently we can take news feeds and things like that. We can take Twitter feeds, social media, and uh, analyze them to understand what people are talking about, what's relevant, what's important to a particular uh, domain, right? So if I'm talking about risk management for IBM, then I'm going to be looking at a certain set of documents. And if I'm with the, the federal government, I might be looking at a different set of government, uh, talk, documents. And, uh, you know, it's going to vary from domain to domain. But we can using IBM streams ingest, you know, amazing amounts of data as needed to process that stuff, to prepare it for the user's review. What we do is we develop these topic models which allow a user to specify what they care about. But they don't have to say, uh, I care about A, B, and C. Uh, they just say, I care about this list of things. I don't know what's important today, you tell me. So we scour through this source of, these sources of data looking for various clusterings of these topics so that we can understand when a group of document, documents are talking about something that's relevant to a particular user, even if they don't know that these three or four or ten topics are occurring at the same time. So this helps them uh, focus on emerging things that they would otherwise not be aware of. It sounds like you're going up and down in terms of the level of abstraction. Yeah, it's true. And in fact, we're pulling in so many uh, additional pieces like uh, what's called word embedding, which is a really hot topic these mm -hmm. days. Um, you know, semantic understanding, phrase embedding, sentence embedding, all these uh, machine learning techniques, recursive neural networks and things like that, to try to help find what's relevant and try to help build these models that are going to allow the uh, reasoning about the future. Excellent. I think reasoning about the future is probably where we're going to have to leave it, but that's a great phrase. Thank you very much, Adrian. Thanks.